So today we begin the season of Advent when we are hastily awaiting the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in Bethlehem. Jesus was born in a manger. A manger is where animals eat. It's a feeding trot for animals. I can't really pronounce that word very well in English, but it's where animals eat from. So Jesus was born in a stable in the midst of animals, in the midst of filth, manure. Manure is another word for caca. That's where Jesus was born. He was born in a very messy place. God enters the messiness of our lives. That's what Advent is about. For God to be born anew in the midst of my own messiness, in the midst of the mess of my own life, of my own filth that surrounds me that is so often in me. In the first reading today that we have just had proclaimed to us from the prophet Isaiah, the most quoted prophet by Jesus in the, uh, in the New Testament, probably the most important book of the Old Testament in terms of Jesus quoting and using in his own preaching. The prophet Isaiah tells us that we are like unclean rags. All of us have become like unclean people, like polluted rags. What is this polluted rags referring to? It's referring to the sanitary pads or towels that women would use during those days. They didn't have always, I think those are the, the that's the brand, that's at least what I've been told or what, you know, that that's the always brand that they have today or tampons or Kotex, I think. I hope I'm... <laughs> you didn't know I knew about these things. <laughs> but uh, they didn't have that. Actually, not too long ago, they didn't have those things. It's just a recent thing. But uh, women used to have to use uh, rags. And the soiled rags with blood is probably one of the worst images of something impure and unclean for a Jew. It was the most unholy thing. A woman who is having her period for a Jew is totally impure, unclean, and you have to stay away from her. She had to be segregated, set apart. She's unholy, can't touch her. She has to be away from everybody. And this is the image that the prophet is giving us of what we look like as people in our own messiness, that we all carry things inside of us from our past. 
the issues that we have, the mistakes that all of us are carrying so much baggage, whether it be what people have done to us. I will never forget at one funeral after the funeral a young woman says to me, I am so very distraught, she says, because my mom's sister just told me something. You see, Father, she says, my mother would always be super protective of me. She never let me go anywhere. She wouldn't let me leave the house. She was always nagging and she always wanted me to text her. I could never go out with my friends, nothing. I had a super protective mother. And I was always rebellious of this protectiveness. And I hated my mother for this behavior. And at the funeral, the mom's sister came up to her and said, you know, I know that you and your mom had a very hard time. But there's something that your mom never told you. And that is that when she was a teenager, she was raped. And of course, that always was part of her. And she always wanted to protect her daughter. And that's why she acted the way she acted. So all of us carry things. We all have messiness inside of us. Each and every one of us, we've all been hurt in the past. You've had horrible things happen to you in your life. At the end of the first reading today, we hear that you, O oh Lord, are our Father, we are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. In other words, we are being molded. We are in the oven. And there's fire in the oven. Welcome to the oven and the fire, which is this life. That's why you've had so many things happen to you. The divorce, the betrayal, you've been cheated on. How many people have been sexually abused? All sorts of horrible things happen to them. Mentally abused. You've gone through so much anguish in your life. We all have things we carry. I remember when I was... Growing up in Poland, we had a woman in the town. She was older at the time. She has since passed away. But everybody used to make fun of her. Everybody used to make fun of her because she'd go around everywhere and she'd be carrying bread everywhere she'd go. She'd have bread in her pocket. She'd have her little purse and she'd have bread in there. She'd go everywhere. She'd, I remember she'd be sitting at the bus stop and she'd take out a piece of bread. She had bread on her all the time. And all the kids would make fun of her. We'd call her all sorts of things. 
people in town would make fun of her because nobody knew what my grandmother just told me. She says, you know why so-and-so was carrying bread all the time? Because she was at Auschwitz. She was a prisoner in the infamous concentration camp Auschwitz-Birkenau that the Nazis set up during the Second World War. And when the Soviets liberated the camp in January of 45, she weighed 30 kilos, which is around 60 pounds. And she was sitting under a tree eating grass. But nobody knew her story. It's easy to pass judgment. We can do that so very easily in our own families if we just listen to each other's stories. Well, God is interested in our story during this Advent season. God wants to find out our story. And God accepts us with our messy story, whatever that story may be. You, O Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. God is inviting us during this Advent season to tell us His story. So, there is an image for the Advent season that I'd like to leave you with. I like to think of Advent as a waiting room in a, a, a hospital birth, birthing room. You ever been in a, in, a, in a hospital birthing room? I think now they allow the guys to go in with their wives when the child is being born. So you can go in and you can see what's happening in there. I've been in a hospital birthing room many times waiting for babies to be born and to baptize the baby when there is a danger of a baby that is to be born and it's a premature baby. I've been in the birthing room waiting to baptize the baby. So if somebody ever tells you Father Adam hasn't seen everything, you can say he sure has. <laughs> but if you're in a hospital waiting room, it's pretty messy in there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I will never forget. I'm in the waiting room and, the, 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 you know, there's screams in there and all sorts of things going on. And uh, the husband is holding the wife's hand and, he's, and he says he's caressing her hand and everything. And he says, it'll be okay, honey. It'll be just fine. And she looks at him and says, shut up. You did this to me. <laughs> 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 it's all your fault. <laughs> but there's screams in the birthing room. There's blood. And then, of course, comes the baby. And everybody rejoices. New life. Something new is born. So during this Advent season, what has to happen in order for something new to be born? 
in mess, in the messiness of our life, okay, in, in a manger, what has to happen? What do you have to do in the birthing room, in the, in the room where the baby is born? What does the woman have to do in order for the baby to be born in messiness? Open up! You gotta open up. Advent is about opening up. Can I give you any other image than that? You will leave here with it. <laughs> you have to open up. If you want change in your life, positive change, if you want God to act in your life, if you want God to be the potter that he is and for you to be the clay that you are called to be, you got to open up in your life. Open up to your husband, to your wife, to your children, to your siblings about your past, about your issues. You got to open up. Are you depressed? Well, open up about it. Get some help. Go to your doctor. Get some medicine. If you've got issues, get help for them. Open up. Traditionally, during the Advent season is when we have confessions. I will be glad to hear your confession during this Advent season. We'll set up a time when I can bring in a couple of uh, my friends to co uh, come and help me hear your confessions. And one of them is very hard of hearing, so you'll be happy to hear. <laughs> You have to open up. So what are you going to open up about during this Advent season? I'm, I'm about to light the Advent candle. The first week is starting. It's going to be, this, you know, Christmas is going to be here before you know it. Hmm? So this is a time for us to reflect on what we are going to be opening up about in our life. So many of us are going to be cleaning our house. At least I hope you all will, you know, during this time. But we got to clean the uh, inside of our lives. Okay, let's light the first candle on our Advent wreath. First week of Advent started. Christmas will be here before we know it. You don't want to end up like that young woman after the funeral of her mother never bothered to sit down and say, Mom, hey, you know, why, why are you like this? Huh? Some of you, you have such closed families. Horrible, horrible. You don't ever talk. It's terrible. Do you know how many hours people spend a day on their phone? What's the average of a person? You could actually look this up. Just look at your iPhone. It will tell you how much time you spend looking at it because it measures your eyes and everything, and it will tell you, okay? Do you know what's the average? Three and a half hours a day, people on their phone. Mm -hmm. What is the average of people talking to each other? Couples, especially. Eight minutes. 
Uh-huh. And then speaking of um, tampons and other things and unclean things uh, and, and menstrual cycles, this is all from the Bible. This is not, okay, it's today's, it's right there. Uh, do you know what the average today is for a couple to be together intimately? 11 minutes. Mm-hmm. 11 minutes. No wonder we have, now they're saying it used to be 50% divorce. Now it's like 60. All these couples since I've gotten here to the parish that have since divorced in a couple years. It's amazing. Families broken up. The disposable culture and the breakup of the family. We don't talk to each other anymore. We don't learn each other's stories. That's what I'm inviting you to do during this Advent season. See what it is that you need to change and heal. It can only happen if you open up. So there's your image for Advent. Because what happens during Advent? What are we waiting for? The birth of Jesus, which is a hospital delivery room, isn't it? This is the delivery room. So open up. For the change to come as we stand and profess our faith today.